Now let's see a theorem which connects the relation between the tangent and radius. The tangent and radius are always said to be connected because they are very much associated geometrically in their own understanding. So let's identify the relation between the tangent of a circle and the radius of that particular circle taken into consideration. So let's see that through a theorem and then prove on the supported statement what we're going to take here. So let's start with the theorem which says that the tangent of a circle at any point of contact is perpendicular to the radius of the circle. This is what we are going to prove in the theorem that the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius of the circle. So the statement to be completed with the tangent of a circle at any point of contact is perpendicular to the radius of this of that circle circle at the same point of contact is how we understand the statement of the theorem. To understand the statement more clearly, let me just draw a diagram and see how the statement reads or is understood in the geometrical understanding. So if I take a tangent at any point, say I have a I consider the point P here as the point of contact between the line which is the tangent and P. T is the tangent and P is the point of contact. Then the theorem says that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius of that circle at the same point of contact. Now this is very important because there are different infinite radius we have on the circle. but this tangent is said to be perpendicular to that radius which passes through the point of contact. So there's only one radius which passes through point of contact. The, all the different radius, radii pass through the different points on the circumference of the circle. So on these infinite points, there are infinite radii and there's only one unique radius which passes through the point of contact. And this radius is said to be perpendicular to the tangent at that point of contact P. So we have to prove for the radius perpendicular to tangent. So let's try to prove using the various mathematical properties that radius is perpendicular to tangent. So let's start with the given part of the theorem which says that consider a circle with center O, let P be the point of contact, let P be the point on the circle where XY is the tangent, is what I have considered in case of the given. So therefore, using this given concept, I have a circle where the center is O, circle with center O, and P is a point on the circle, say this is the point P on the circle, where XY is the tangent. So at that point P, XY is a tangent which comes like this. So this is how the given concept is reduced to a diagram. That implies from the given part, if I join OP, then what will OP be? That implies OP is equal to radius of the circle with center O and 
passing through P. Now, as we have already discussed in the given part that there's only one radius which passes through point P, I want to consider that particular radius out of the infinite radii where OP is the radius which I'm going to consider here, is the radius of the circle with center O and passing through the point of contact. And passing through the point of contact P is how I understand the given path. Now once the given concept is converted into the diagram, next comes on what I need to prove. So let's take the RTP, the required to prove path, which says that clearly I need to prove that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. That is, the radius in case of that diagram being OP passing through P and the tangent which is XY is what I'm going to prove in my theorem. So this is what I need to prove in its mathematical understanding. So let's see the proof of the theorem utilizing the diagram and few of the mathematical properties. So coming to the proof. Now to start with the proof of the previous theorem, we need to understand that the proof is by contradiction. That is, I assume that the radius is not perpendicular to tangent and I prove a contradiction in mathematics. Then our assumption becomes wrong. So this kind of a proof is generally referred to as the proof by contradiction. So here, the proof is by contradiction. To make a note of the proof. So let's assume that let OP be not perpendicular to tangent xy. <coughs> so remember OP is referred as the radius and xy is referred as the tangent. Now because I need to prove that the radius is perpendicular to tangent, my proof by contradiction says that I assume that OP is not perpendicular to xy and then I come to the assumption which is wrong. So finally my assumption being wrong makes the original assumption that OP must be perpendicular to xy and such kind of proofs are called the proof by contradiction. So to start with, I assume fairly that OP is not perpendicular to XY, where this is the radius passing through P and this is the tangent at P. So identifying the radius and tangent, let's see how we can proceed with the proof. So because OP is not perpendicular to XY, let Q be a point on xy such that OQ is perpendicular to the tangent xy. So let me take one of the point Q which is perpendicular and prove by contradiction. Therefore, since Q is a point on xy such that OQ is this implies clearly that if I take a point Q on XY, say I take somewhere here, because already there's a point P on the circle, then this case, let me join OQ. Now here, I make a note that since OQ is perpendicular to XY and Q is a point on XY, that implies Q lies outside the circle, but on the tangent xy. This is a very important note I need to make because geometrically I say that q lies outside the circle to support because if suppose q lies inside the circle then what happens? So for example my q lies outside the inside the circle then because q is a point on xy tangent is always a line which touches the circle so q cannot be inside. If it is inside then the line also must be inside where this line acts as the secant. Therefore, Q cannot be inside the circle because strictly it lies on XY, which is the tangent. If it lies inside, you get a secant. So therefore, Q lies outside the circle since the reasoning is very important here because since Q lies 
on the tangent x y which touches the circle that is if q lies inside the circle circle then Q lying on x, y and inside the circle implies x, y is a secant to the circle because it acts as the secant if Q lies inside then it cuts the circle in two parts which is an absurd which is not possible possible because simply x y is a tangent it's not possible because x y is a tangent to the circle but when we assume that q is outside as we have proved through the previous part of the proof then if q lies outside the circle then clearly vo q should be greater than vo p because since q lies outside the circle on the tangent x y therefore vo q should be clearly greater than vo p as you can see here p lies on the circle and q lies outside therefore this must be greater line segment than this as can be seen through the diagram this is greater than vo p but i think this is not possible because that means our assumption that vo q is perpendicular to x y is wrong because if vo q is perpendicular to x y then vo q must be the shortest distance but here i have one more shortest distance other than this that means our assumption that vo q perpendicular to x y is wrong since vo q greater than vo p implies vo q is not the shortest distance the shortest distance therefore op must be perpendicular to xy this is how we get the radius perpendicular to tangent therefore op must be perpendicular because voq is not the shortest distance therefore you take any point out other than p it lies outside and therefore that point makes us voq greater than op therefore op is the shortest distance therefore op is perpendicular to xy since op is the shortest distance from vo to xy so this proves that the radius is perpendicular to tangent so for any circle with center vo the radius passing through the point of contact must be perpendicular to tangent this is how we conclude the theorem the proof by contradiction